The Holy Spirit plays a very important role in the new birth in a sense that it is him who convicts us of sin and causes us to be born again and to give our lives to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the one who cleanses, renews our spirit, and transforms our hearts. John 3.3 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus was telling Nicodemus and all of us that our whole life should be cleansed and our hearts transformed. That is to be born again. The Holy Spirit produces this new birth in our lives. Jesus was talking about your inward life, what you are. The term born again means to be born anew and to be born from above. In other words, the source of this new birth is God. Jesus is saying that you cannot experience the reign of God without experiencing the new birth first, or the supernatural birth. Nothing can cleanse the sin that is inherent in our heart. Jesus knew that Nicodemus needed more than a respectable teacher. He needed a savior. He needed more than religion. He needed regeneration. He needed more than a law. He needed life. Jesus knew what lies deep in the heart of all people. The fatal disease that causes lying, cheating, hate, prejudice, greed, and lust. In salvation or new birth, the Holy Spirit is the cure of this disease called sin. Four signs that show we are walking in the Spirit. After giving your lives to Christ and accepting Him as our Lord and Savior, our Christian journey begins. A lot of people have the misconception that this is the end, but it really isn't. It's only the beginning of many spectacular changes that will take place in the time to come as we continue on this eternal path. As we grow in our journey with Christ as a believer, there are visible signs and changes that confirm our growth in Christ and tell whether we are on the right path or not. As a child, my father used to always tell me, growth is a principle. If something is not growing, there is a problem. I believe this to be absolutely true in the spiritual sense. Luke 2 verse 52 And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and men. Now in the Bible we see this wonderful term, walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5 verse 16 I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5 verse 25 if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. To walk by the Spirit, you first need to receive the Spirit. The Spirit we are talking about here is the Holy Spirit. He is the helper for Christians who want real results in their Christian walk. The Holy Spirit comes with a wonderful range of benefits to the believers. He gives us the power to overcome the challenges of life, to bear the greatest burdens and adversity. This is why you find saints who are filled with the Holy Spirit still have joy during the sorrows of life. He is also a guide. He will guide us into all truth. He knows the way Jesus opened when he was on earth. The way which leads you away from everything harmful and negative and towards what blesses and benefits your neighbor, filling you with joy and peace. Therefore, to live a life in the Spirit, a life that walks in the Spirit and not the flesh, is a life centered around the Holy Spirit. Here are four signs that show we are walking in the Spirit. Firstly, an individual begins to deliberately chase after Christ and the things of the Spirit. Growth is intentional, not accidental. 
Just as we are conscious about our physical growth, nurture our bodies, and keep it healthy, this is also necessary when it concerns the spirit. There has to be conscious effort of abiding in Christ, the determination to follow his commandments and do whatever he asks. 1 John 3 verse 24 Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit whom he has given us. Chasing after Christ isn't necessarily about doing activities or being busy working for him, as many of us have termed it to mean. Although our service and willingness to do God's work or be an instrument in his service is also further confirmation that we love him, but that isn't all there is to it. We need to make sure that we keep his commandments and maintain our connection through prayer, trust, and constant yielding and brokenness in spirit. It's not about working for him, it's also about letting him work in us too. Secondly, our gaze is not fixed on fleshly desires. The more we journey with God and walk in the Spirit, the more we see the desires to gratify the desires of flesh die and fade away. This isn't because of our own willpower, but because of the Spirit of God that's at work in us. Galatians 5 verse 16 to 17 So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit likes what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so you are not to do whatever you want. Apostle Paul pointed out to us in this verse that it's not by our power that the natural man gives way to Christ, but by abiding and walking in the Spirit. When we find out that the mundane things that normally get us attracted, excited, or distracted no longer please us or tickle our fancy, it's a good sign that God's Spirit is mightily at work in us. When we no longer yield to the yearnings of the flesh and all our priorities are things that pertain to the knowledge of God, we can be said to be walking in the Spirit. Thirdly, yielding to the things of the Spirit comes easily to you. Walking in the Spirit makes keeping the laws and commandments of God easier. If at every point in our Christian journey we struggle to obey God's instructions or find it difficult to follow God's lead or struggle to surrender to God's will rather than our own, then it might be that we haven't surrendered to Him fully and let Him have His way in us. We won't dilly-dally, procrastinate, or wait to be dragged in before expressing our love for Him if His Spirit is at work in us. To walk in the Spirit also makes us overcome all kinds of temptations that might appear in our lives. Even when our fellow humans tempt us and are incited to retaliate or react in very unpleasant ways, we hold our peace and resolve the situation amicably without escalating. Romans 12 verse 21 Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This will be our anchor scripture whenever we are faced with situations that will ordinarily make us react in a retaliative or destructive way. Fourthly and finally, we are producing good fruits. The fruits we produce indicate whether we are truly walking in the Spirit or aren't just trying to keep up appearances. The book of Galatians 5 verse 19 through 26 clearly states the acts of the flesh and the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5 verse 22 to 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law, and those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. When we see these fruits manifest in our lives and our default resolve to handle and approach any situation we are going through in life is calm, it shows that we are yielding and giving in to the work of Christ in us. As we continue to yield, these fruits become more pronounced in our lives. We will be continuously transformed so we think and act differently from who and what we used to be. As much as growth is intentional, it's also not a one-day job. Nobody grows into being an adult in one day. In our Christian journey, especially as young Christians, sometimes we might lose our way or digress from the path. We should not lose hope or courage 
or think God is no longer interested in us, or our journey has become useless because of that one mistake or multiple mistakes, we should find the boldness and comfort we need in Christ and continue. Another name for the Spirit is the Comforter. He will comfort us, hold our hands, and lead us through the journey. We mustn't get to any point in our Christian journey when we think we are independent of the Spirit or are knowledgeable enough to walk our own walk. The walk with the Spirit is a perpetual one. We should continuously seek the Spirit's help to stay on track and get the strength needed to finish our course as a victor. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Romans 8 verse 26. 